Vamos lá então. Opa. Está invertido lá. Eu estou me enxergando. Eu estou me vendo aqui. Uh, peace of the Lord uh, to all our brother and sister, those who are on the broadcast. Uh, we are very glad to have you this morning. We hope that you are fine. And uh, in this uh, magazine, uh, or in this month, also it is a new month, and also it is a new magazine, we want to give uh, all uh, the grace to our God that allow us to be with you. Those who are on the broadcast, I want you please to, uh, this morning, to share the link with all uh, our listeners, all those that maybe you know that speak uh, the English language, and uh, those maybe that uh, would like also to speak. We'll be very happy to have uh, many listeners or many people uh, following us uh, in the, or during this uh, lesson or uh, during this uh, magazine. So uh, I want also, before we start, uh, try to uh, apologize. We are a little bit uh, starting a little bit late. Actually, we start uh, at uh, 9 a.m. And uh, this morning we have some technical problem, but we want to give thanks to God because uh, everything's uh, is solved now. So let us go to the Lord in prayer and let us uh, try uh, to share with you the first uh, lesson of this uh, magazine, The Divine Saving Grace, The Divine Saving Grace. This will be the new magazine that we are going to follow. We have uh, like uh, uh, 22 lessons. So in uh, 22 lessons, we are going to share uh, with you. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is a uh, following or in the continuation of the lessons or the magazines that we study in the in the previous uh, month. Now, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your grace and your mercy. Thank you so much for the opportunity that you are given to us uh, this morning to, to be here. Lord, we want to surrender everything into your hand. We want, oh God, uh, that by your grace and your mercy, you help us to uh, understand what uh, you have prepared for our health this morning. I pray, Lord, that you bless all our listeners, bless all those who are on the broadcast, and let your grace and your mercy, let your favor be upon their life too. In Jesus' mighty name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. So uh, I want brother Christians to put the first, the first uh, slide, and, uh, the, which is uh, the title of uh, this uh, lesson. Yes, this one. Thank you very much. Now... <coughs> First offensive tactical action to conquer Crete, a crusade for a sound doctrine. So uh, this is the title of uh, this lesson. And uh, I want you, as I said, brother and sisters, to share these lessons with uh, uh, all those that maybe may have uh, some interest in learning English. And uh, I want uh, immediately, brother Christian, to put the next, which is... Uh, uh, now about the, the key verse, Titus chapter 2, verse 1, and Titus chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 15. Now, if you have your Bible, please uh, turn with me and uh, let us read. Uh, you can find also on the screen there. But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. Speak these things, exalt and rebuke with all authority, let no one despise you. Titus chapter uh, 2, verse uh, 15. Now, this is, these are the key verse, these are the key verse that uh, uh, we are going to, to uh, I mean, to follow during this uh, uh, lesson. Uh, Apostle Paul here, we are going to, 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 to continue. I want, brother, I want immediately to put the introduction. Let him let us go to the introduction, the next one, uh, which is the introduction. Yes, this one. Thank you very much. Now, Paul draws in this letter uh, to Titus with extraordinary uh, capacity for synthesis, a treatise on a sound doctrine for salvation that would work as a vaccine against doctrines that could destroy the holiness of the church. The teaching of the divine revelation to the entire church was part of the strategy to the apply 
uh, to be applied with a view to uh, a victory for the church in, uh, in Crete. Thank you uh, very much. Now, just trying to summary or to sum up uh, what we studied in the previous uh, magazine, especially in lesson 14, uh, that was uh, taught here by Brother Tiago. And uh, in that last lesson, Apostle Paul starting given to Titus uh, some uh, uh, tactical or offensive tactical uh, strategies or planning for him to build a holy church in an uh, hostile environment. Now, just a little bit to, to, to share with you uh, the, the challenges that uh, Titus have at that time uh, to build in the, the church, a holy church, in, the, in such environment, a corrupted environment, corrupted society, I mean, among the corrupted Christianity. And uh, we figure out that the church in the Eastland, in the Crete Eastland, suffer a lot of uh, struggles, uh, a lot of problems, right? That's why Apostle Paul, in the beginning, he said, Titus, I have let you in the Eastland Crete for you to put in order the church, the, the order the, the, uh, in the church, uh, to put things in order, and also to establish uh, elders in, uh, order, in other towns. So we have shared a lot about uh, the geographical position of uh, the Eastland, the Crete Eastland. We study about the history. Uh, just to remind you a little bit that the Church of Crete, uh, we have uh, many, I would say, many religions there. We have Judaisms, which is the, the traditional Judaisms. We have uh, the Judaisms of fables. This was the, the Judaisms mixture with uh, Oriental uh, uh, or, or East religions, right? And uh, we also study about the Kabbalah because it was they were not only believe about the law of Moses, which was the, the traditional Judaisms, but they, they also add not only to the law of Moses, they add also some East. Uh, religion some that believe even to the angels right so it was a, a kind of a mixture another religion that was uh, uh, there inside also that infiltrate the church in, in Crete was idolatry right idolatry animisms and the last one was uh, Gnosticism that we study also a lot in the previous uh, magazine Gnosticism and uh, now uh, Following that uh, view uh, or strategy or planning uh, that Apostle Paul was uh, given to Titus, and of course it is uh, very actual because uh, nowadays uh, the time that we are living is a very difficult time, and uh, it was also it was already prophesied. Jesus prophesied about it. Apostle Paul he wrote about it in the second in the book of uh, Second Timothy chapter four, uh, verse one. Second Timothy chapter three. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, talking about the last time, the time will be difficult, and the people, of course, will uh, backsliding, I mean, will not following anymore the doctrine, or the holy doctrine, will not preach anymore the holy doctrine, but will try to pick, to, to preach the things that are, you know, that are pleasing human beings. Nowadays, you have many kind of uh, churches, you have churches for uh, all kind of things, even the things that we, we you, you cannot expect that we will find it in the church, you will find it in many churches, right? So nowadays, it, it is also like a challenge for those who really want to preach the holy doctrine, uh, you know, to, to survive, let us say something like that, to survive, because people are uh, pervert things, let me say, like that, the, whole, the, the, the gospels. But indeed, we are called as a true believer or Christians because many people maybe confess that they are Christians, but uh, the Bible said that you will know them by their fruits. You know a tree. How you know a tree? By looking the fruits. If you look an apple tree, you will know that it's an apple tree when you will see the fruits coming from the apple tree. That this is, uh, uh, of course, very, uh, very interesting. Now, what I want to, to say, just remembering what we studied also last time, but so Apostle Paul gave uh, 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 the strategy of plan planning, saying to, to Titus that he has to promote a crusade in the favor of the Holy Doctrine, has to establish also a, in his, a, a, 
uh, applying the holy doctrine in his life, and he has established uh, establishing the, a counter attack to those who were perverting uh, the holy doctrine uh, in the church. He has to establish a holy doctrine. He has to preach the holy doctrine in order to shut the mouth of uh, those who uh, were speaking the things that was not proper to the holy doctrine. So, and uh, he has to rebuke, he has to teach, he has to, to, to gather, he has to, to, to converse. So this was uh, the, the strategy that uh, Apostle Paul gave. And uh, in this lesson, we are going to uh, move further in that view, in the same view of the previous magazine that we studied, built uh, a holy church in the corrupted society and in, among the corrupted generation or corrupted uh, Christianity. So this we are going to see now the divine grace, the divine saving grace, the divine saving grace. Now this is very important because uh, the concept of uh, grace is uh, misunderstood nowadays. Uh, when we would ask many people, what is grace? They will say, okay, grace is, uh, it is a favor. Yes, grace is a favor. Okay. And when many people actually will use this uh, concept and say, okay, it is a favor. And uh, uh, like in the Romans chapter 6 that Apostle Paul will say, it, it, it does it mean that because we have been saved by the grace that we will continue living as uh, sinners? So if someone said that he has received a grace but still living in sins, he has not yet received the uh, grace. So although people think, yes, it is a favor, but it is the, the grace working not only for salvation, but we will see in this lesson also in the next lessons that the grace, that grace, the divine grace, yes, the divine grace work also for sanctification. So it works for salvation, and it also works for for sanctification. So it's not that uh, the Bible said that the one who begins the good work will continue it. So if someone said that I receive the grace to be saved, and still living in the darkness, or still living as a, a non-believer, so he has not yet received grace. Because grace will not make a partial work. God is not working partially in your life and in my life. The work of God is full. So if he has saved you, the one who began, the Bible said, the good work in you will continue it. So God will not only save you and let you there and tr that you continue living in your way, but he will save you and also with the word, as Ephesians said, Ephesians uh, chapter 5, uh, verse 25, uh, that uh, he will wash you through the world. So the same grace that saves, it is the same grace that will work for your sanctification and for my sanctification. Let us move uh, forward. I want brother uh, Christians to put next the next uh, uh, picture. Uh, yes, this one. So Paul holds uh, Titus' responsibility as a supervisor or overseer, or the versions we said, so the Apostle Paul drew Titus' uh, attention to the fact that a Christian's leader is above all a guardian of a sound doctrine and, as such, its spreadings, right? And that should be the number one commitment of an overseer or any other leader in the church who has a pastoral or governmental role. Now, I put this verse, Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Behold, I am uh, coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one uh, may uh, take your uh, crown. No one may take your crown. Thank you very much, for your Christians. Now, the first responsibility here is uh, to Titus as a leader, overseers, or supervisors. So, uh, for as a, as a leader, as a supervisor, he has the commitment, the first commitment or commitment number one uh, that Apostle Paul here is uh, reminding to, to Titus is that he has to speak the holy doctrine. He has to be a guardian of the holy doctrine, of his son doctrine. 
So that means that is even if all the churches, all the church, right, have to depart from the truth, depart from the holy doctrine or to the, the, the sun doctrine, uh, Titus was supposed to keep it. It was he was supposed to hold fast and not uh, give up. Continue preaching the holy doctrine. Continue preaching the sun doctrine. Now, this is very important nowadays because we have uh, such like uh, many leaders that abandon to preach the sun doctrine uh, because uh, of uh, the church. I mean, they are supposed to bring the revelation to the church, but because they are pressing or they have been pressed by the church like a soul, uh, uh, so what happened when uh, uh, he made the sacrifice? Samuel told him... Uh, he was not supposed to make the sacrifice. Samuel said, wait, I will come and make the sacrifice. And then he, when he was pressed by the people, as he said, pressed by uh, the, the, the Israel peoples, and then he went and made the sacrifice. Now, he tried to justify later when uh, Samuel uh, uh, came, tried to justify saying that, uh, Samuel, it's not my fault. Because the people were, were pressing me, so I did not know what to do. So I just uh, follow what the people want. And somewhere it was not a, an excuse. So God did not uh, spare uh, Saul because he just said that he, were, he, he, he was uh, pressed uh, by the people. So this is very important. Why? Because uh, Saul was a king. He was supposed to obey. He was supposed to show to the people that, to the Israel people, that uh, uh, even you have to depart from God, I will not. So here also, Apostle Paul is giving the responsibility to Titus. Titus, I have uh, let you in the Eastland, in the Crete Eastland, for you to put in order. You are the overseer. You are the leader of the church. You are the leader in the Eastland of Crete. Now, the, your first commitment, above all commitment that you have, is, first of all, to be a guardian of the sun doctrine. Hold fast the sun doctrine. Preach the sun doctrine. Even all people will leave the church, but you will remain with God alone. Now, many people nowadays say now, uh, when you are preaching the sun doctrine, people will leave the people will leave the church. People will go to another church. People will do this and people will do that. But they are absolutely wrong, and this cannot be an excuse. This cannot serve as an excuse, because uh, if God is with you, you have to hold fast. You have to continue. That's why many churches nowadays, uh, you know, they say, "No, let us attract the world." And then they will come and they will be saved. That is absolutely wrong. It is absolutely wrong. This is not what God or the primitive, how the primitive church live. No. The primitive church live the same doctrine. So we are called, and especially those who are leaders, pastors, or those who have a, a governmental role in the church, they are called, their first commitment is to keep the same doctrine, to preach the same doctrine. Even all the people who left the church is not the number. The number is good. Yes, the number is good. But God's not looking to the number. God is looking first of all to his word. Are you preaching the word? You are not wiser than God. I mean, you will say that, no, I hope that uh, this word is not uh, so much appropriate. So, oh, God is very severe. No, let us try to be kind. So you are more kind than God. So this is not uh, actually, this is an heresy, and most of the time, I mean, uh, people deceive yourself, trying to be a, a loving, kind uh, than God, which is absolutely uh, nonsense, right? Now, let us move forward uh, with uh, Christians also. Let us go to the next one. Uh, now, the duties of a supervisor regarding the dissemination of the holy doctrine. So now, uh, if you are, of course, indeed uh, with me, you can follow us by reading also, uh, uh, by reading, right? If you want, also you can read uh, 
uh, with me there. Actually, we put because the magazine is not yet uh, available. Now, the first commitment, as we said here, but as, uh, as you speak these things, speak these things. So the first commitment that Paul gave to the supervisor, Titus, overseer, in the east land of Crete, the first thing is that speak. So Titus chapter 2, uh, verse 1, but as for you, as for you, Titus, your commitment, you have to keep this, uh, uh, keep you up to be a guardian of sound doctrine. Now, how you have to be a guardian of sound doctrine? Now, what you should be your commitment in the dissemination of the sound doctrine? You have to speak first of all, but as you, Titus chapter 2, verse 1, but as for you, uh, speak these things which are proper for sound doctrine, which are proper for sound doctrine. Now, the word here speak comes from the Greek word laleo, which uh, basically means speak, say, uh, tell, or conversation, or to chat with someone, to chat. So Titus was supposed to not only uh, uh, speak it when he was in the pulpit in the church, but even when he will visit people, he will visit uh, the believers in their house, he has always to speak those things. He has always to speak about the sound doctrine. The sound doctrine. And this is very important that uh, even uh, in, in, the, in the same book, we are, we are going to see also another recommendation in Ephesians chapter uh, 4, verse 29, that uh, Apostle Paul also give the strong recommendation about speaking only what will be profitable to those who are listening to you. So as a leader, the first commitment of, uh, or maybe the second, the second one, will be to preach or to, to speak that word, to speak the, about the same doctrine, to defend, to be a defender, to defend the holy doctrine, to defend that, that, uh, the, the, the word of God. So as a leader also nowadays, unfortunately, as we said, people just stop being speaking uh, about uh, the gospel, stop speaking about uh, the sound doctrine, and try to bring another topic, philosophies, uh, and other, other topic, politics. And uh, no, Apostle Paul said, your commitment is not to talk about politics. It's not about to talk to the things that's happening in the world. You have to be a disseminator of uh, the holy doctrine or the sound doctrine. This is very, very important. It was a commitment for him. So first of all, for you, as for you, but as for you, you are not caring about order. This is very important because uh, Titus may say, oh, Apostle Paul, I have a, a so I'm suffering a lot of uh, pressure here. Uh, you know, people does not want uh, holy doctrine or sound doctrine here and so on. People are speaking this. Of course, Apostle Paul know that there were Gnosticisms there. There was the philosophy, Greek philosophies. There were Judaisms, uh, those of the circumcision and uh, those of the fables. Apostle Paul was aware about all those things. But he said, but as for you, you are not caring about what people are saying. But as for you, you know, when you have to follow Jesus, you have, uh, it is a commitment, a personal commitment, you know, and it is a personal involvement. You are not following, that was when someone came and said, Jesus, I want to follow you, but please let me do this first. He said, no, let uh, the deaf uh, bury their deaf, but you come and follow me. Actually, it is actually a personal communion, commitment with God. It's not that because people are doing this, other churches are doing that. Uh, titles we use as an excuse, saying to Apostle Paul that, uh, look here, you know the, Crit you know the Cretans, uh, you know, the Crete uh, people, liar, you know, uh, and so on. We study it uh, in, the, in, the, in the previous uh, magazine. Uh, rebels, you know, they are not people that obey. And uh, you know, here the environment is very tough, you know. Uh, but this was not an excuse. Apostle Paul said, but as for you, you have to speak those things. So a uh, true Christian is not, is not going to care about what people are saying. If you are living according to the sound doctrine, you are not going to be concerned. If people will criticize you, if people will try to say that, oh, uh, you know, you are, you, are, you are wrong, you are exaggerating, 
you know, this church uh, tried to say that uh, people have to dress like this, have to dress like that, uh, have not to do this, have not to do that. I hope that this is very heavy. No, we are free. I mean, this is the true freedom. This is a true freedom. And also, you have not to care. The first thing is, is try to follow in what the Bible say about it. What the Bible say how I should dress. How, how the Bible, what the Bible said about how I should live. You know, the Bible is a lifestyle. It's not only for something for our mind. It's not something because nowadays it will be just prosperity. God have saved you, have been saved by grace, so just try living, you know, if you do this, it's good. If not, okay, it's okay. Just trying to do something like this, and then people having, you know, many things there. That, that, that's not gospel. That's not gospel. You will not find nowhere, in no place in the Bible that uh, the true believers, the primitive church, live like that. Try to look in your environment. Try to look even in your church where you are, uh, 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 I mean, following ship now. Try to look and read the Bible. You will see. And the Holy Spirit will, will, will enlighten you and show you what is wrong in, in that places. And maybe, of course, your pastor will say, no, no, that's not okay. You know, we are living in the good time now. We are living in the time of grace. It's not anymore in the time of, of, uh, of the law and so on. But that's not true. The primitive church does not live like that. The primitive church have a lifestyle. Look, the Bible do not say it that the, in the primitive church, they were the one who said that they, 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 they called themselves, I mean, to be a Christians. But the Bible said that when people just look like them, how they were living, how they were acting, and people just know, these are Christians. I mean, Christ disciple. Now, if you say that you are Christ disciple, that means that people will look Christ. The Bible said that if we say that we are uh, a son of God, we have to walk as Jesus walked on the earth. The questions will be always, are you walking as Jesus walked on the earth? It's not as your congregation. The standard is not your pastors. It's not your leaders. The standard is the Holy Bible, the same doctrine. Are you living the same doctrine? That is the point. So all the Christians have to set their eyes only to Jesus only to the Holy Bible. This is very important. Now, the second commitment, let us move on with uh, Christians. Let us go uh, forward. So they have to speak, they have to teach. This, this was the second one. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verse uh, 7 to 8. In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of a good work in doctrine, Showing integrity, reverences, incorruptibility, sound of speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing ever to say of you. Now, doctrine uh, uh, comes from the Greek word didaskalia, and didaskalia, which means teaching, instruction, doctrine, precept, uh, learning, teaching. Thank you very much. Now, so. The recommendation number two. First one, be a guardian of the sun doctrine. You have to keep it for your own life. First of all, take care of your life. Apostle Paul said it in, in, uh, in, in Timothy, uh, to, to Timothy. Timothy, you have to take care first of all for to your life. Try to apply that in your life. Secondly, as he said here to Titus, secondly, you have to speak lively which means you have uh, to tell, you have to talk with people, you have to chat with people, uh, those who are in the church or those who are outside. This is very important. Do not stop it. Do not start uh, preaching. You have uh, to be a, a, a someone who will uh, spray the sound doctrine. So speak it not only in the pulpit, but also when you are not in the pulpit, when you are visiting people, when you are walking in the street, uh, and so on and so on. Try to have it with you. And uh, when someone teach the first, uh, I mean, the most important teaching that we can find is uh, the teaching of your life. Because most of the time, people will just uh, not caring a lot about what you are saying. People will just watch you. 
I mean, they will watch your life. They will see how you are living. They will see how you are acting and so on. They will just look at your lifestyle and uh, they will be, you know, convinced whether what you are preaching is correct or not. It's, it will be not about that, uh, okay, I'm preaching, uh, God love you, you know, you have to live about the same doctrine, you have uh, to do this, you have to do that, and they will not see you living what you are saying. That is uh, Pharisees, that is uh, hypocrisy. And Jesus condemned uh, the Pharisees uh, about that, saying that, uh, you know, you are, you are, you are trying to, to show something outside there. I mean, saying something that you are not living. You are not applying in your own life. So that's why he said, be a pattern. And it, it, will, be, it will be the same that he will say to uh, Timothy. Timothy, be a pattern. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Be a pattern. No one despise you. No one will despise you, but be a pattern, be a model. People should look at you and respect you, not only because you are speaking, not only because you are teaching, but you are teaching with your character. You are teaching with your lifestyle. People will look at you and will say, no, this is a Christian. This is a man of God. This is a woman of God. How she is dressing, how she is living, her lifestyle, you know, show really who she is. The lifestyle of this boy showed really that he is a Christian. So this will be, this is very important. Not only about, you know, speaking, not only about teaching, not, it is not about only the speech, the word, the word, the word, no. It should be a practice. The gospel, I mean, is practical. It's not, uh, you know, a theoretical. Theory is good, but practical convince. Let me say it again. Theory is good, but practical convince. If I say to you that I'm a Christian, and when you watch me at the street, you look at me, uh, you look at my lifestyle, after this program, for instance, and we meet together on the street, and you look at me, uh, and you say, you, this is two persons, you know, they are, they are different. Unfortunately, we have many Christians like that nowadays. At the church, they are perfect. They dress very well, you know, gentlemen, but outside, you will not, you know, recognize them anymore. You will just look, but this is this brother, or this is this sister that I met on Sunday, or on Tuesday, or on Wednesday. You know, and when you look at them, you will watch their life. Let me just tell you, there are many people or many Christians that if we put a camera, although we know that uh, God is, because uh, if you hide before uh, ice, uh, ice man, you cannot hide before God. There are many people that if we put a camera, just uh, in, in one day in their life, in one day, they will be ashamed. You know, they will be ashamed because they will be not preaching with their character. They will be not preaching in the Facebook, in the WhatsApp, in the social network. No. They are only Christians in the church, but outside they are not. But that was not, Apostle Paul said, be a pattern. Timothy, be a pattern. Titus, be a pattern. Now, let us move on with uh, uh, Brother Christians. Yes. Now, a clear exposition and a firm stand with regard to sound doctrine, the first step to conquering truth. First of all, a clear exposition about what? As we know, last time we studied about that, in the Eastland of Crete, they were lacking teaching. They were lacking teaching. They were not teaching there because, as we said, that the church probably grew up in, East, in the Crete Eastland was not, uh, uh, was not uh, an uh, overseer, I mean, an apostles that opened the church there. Maybe, as we saw, we, not, we, do, we are not sure because we do not have, uh, it, we, there is no consensus about that. People may say that it was uh, an uh, apostles that opened the church in Eastland or in Crete Eastland, but we do not find it in the Bible. Uh, we just find uh, Apostle Paul who was there with uh, Titus and saying that I have led you in Cretans, in, in Eastland, in Crete Eastland, 
for you to set on or to put things in order there. Now, and because of that, of course, we know that the, the church of uh, Christians lack uh, in, uh, 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 a lot of uh, teaching. So Titus was supposed to try to gather and bring a good teaching, preach the sound doctrine there. So it was a clear exposition. As we saw, Gnosticism have their idea about uh, uh, salvation. Judaism have their idea about, about salvation. Uh, idolaters have their idea about salvation. Animisms have their uh, uh, idea about salvation. So Apostle Paul said, Titus, first commitment, preach what is salvation. A clear exposition about salvation. Clear exposition. And in Titus chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, if you want, you can read with me. So salvation is a divine action established since before eternal time. Salvation is a divine action established before the eternal time. Titus chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Apostle Paul said, before the time exists, God, he has promised salvation to all men, and we will say it. So this is very important. This was the first thing that he has to set it. Salvation is a divine action. It's not man action. And uh, you will read it also, another passage in John chapter 1. You, you know the passage, I, I hope, uh, verse uh, 12. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Verse 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Salvation is a divine action. It's not man action. It's not a leader action. It is not your action. You have to understand it. You will not force things. No, because it is a divine action. You have to expose that. It's not by works. It's not by the deeds that you will do this, you will do that, you will do this, and then you will be saved. No, absolutely wrong. The Bible said that our best deeds condemn us. Our best deeds condemn us on the sight of God. So salvation, first one, is a divine action. And God has promised to who? To himself. Right? To before the eternal time. And actually we study about the time. Eternal time. The Bible says when it is eternal time, that means that it was before the time exists. Right? It was before the time exists. Other versions will say before the time exists. Right? Let us move on. Second exposition. So titles have to expose about what? The result of salvation concerning life after death. Second one. So salvation does not consist, salvation does not consist in the loss of the individuality of uh, the soul and uh, its absorption by God, but in the granting of eternal life. Titus chapter 1, verse 2, chap Titus chapter 3, verse 7. That uh, Having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Thank you very much. So the grace of God is so powerful, brother and sister, that uh, it is able to take the, 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 the sinners, the, I mean, a killer's, imagine a serial killer's man. The grace of God is so powerful that he the grace of God can save that person and make that person an heir or a heir of God. That is so amazing. Yes, the grace of God is so powerful. The grace of God is so powerful. As we read in the John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13, it's not the work of man. No, it is only by the grace. You are going to see by God's grace in your life and in my life. So salvation is by grace. Let us put it and set it very clear that salvation is by grace and expose it that it's not by work. It's not by work. It's not that you will do this, you will try to merit 
the grace of God. No, if it, if it is a merit, it's not grace anymore. Apostle Paul say it. If it is by works, because merit comes from works. If it is by works, right? Therefore, by merit, it's not anymore by grace. Because grace supposes uh, that you are not deserving. I mean, actually, I say that what we deserve is death. What we deserve is condemnation. What we deserve is uh, that uh, to be cast in hell. But God is so marvelous, uh, graceful God that what he did is that he saved you and I. Praise the Lord. He saved you and I. And maybe you are listening to me this morning. You may be not a Christian. And when you are looking in your life, you say, I'm a sinner. You know, I'm so dirty. I have did a lot of things. Let me say to you, the grace of God is uh, powerful. The grace of God is so wonderful that it is able to save you. It does not matter your condition. If you will just believe, this is what is important. If you will just believe to the work of salvation, the work that uh, God did through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You will be saved. God will save you. It does not matter your past. Ever you uh, kill many people, or if you are, I mean, it does not matter. God will not care about it. If you want to repent this morning and say, Lord, I am opening my heart to you. I am turning away from my sins, and I want to accept you as Jesus. And uh, Jesus, I want to accept you as Savior and Lord. You will be saved. The grace of God will remove you from your darkness and will bring you into light as the same grace did in my life and in the life of many, right? In the life of many. So just open your heart and say, Lord, here I am, and I want really to, to have this experience with you, and you will be saved. Now let's move on uh, with, uh, the, with uh, Brother Christian. He has the third point. The way of approaching God is the justification by the sacrifice of Christ, unlike a Jew who opened the way to belong to the congregation of Israel through the human act of circumcision, for a Christian, the first step of approaching God for salvation is justification, which is not done by works of righteousness uh, uh, performance, but or, 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 or by human, but uh, through the sacrifice, which is the sacrifice of Christ. The, the, the sacrifice of a righteous one, who is Jesus Christ, the Savior. Titus chapter 3, by, uh, verse 7. Uh, we have been justified by grace. Thank you very much. So, the way to approaching God is not by our works. It's not by your merit. You do not deserve it. As I said, what we deserve is condemnation. What we, we all deserve, because the Bible says if you break only a single law, one law, you are guilty for all the law, to have break all the law. That is very important, to break all the law. So uh, that's why no one is perfect. No one is, can be justified by his works, by his deeds, because your best deeds, as I said, condemn you and I. Condemn you and I. It is only by grace, having been justified, not by circumcision, as the Jewish believe. They, they believe that, uh, you know, making the circumcision, you know, give you access to be a part of Israel, and so on, make you also a believer. And also we find a, dis a discussion about it in Acts chapter, 17, uh, Acts chapter 15. That other Jewish, you know, they go to the Gentiles, and say, okay, unless you are circumcised, you will not be saved. Because they were believing that the circumcision, it is the, the things that give salvation. But Apostle Paul rebuked, <clears throat> sorry, Apostle Paul rebuked them, saying that this is not true. Salvation is by grace. It's not by circumcision. It's not uh, by, I mean, physical circumcision. I'm, I'm speaking about that because circumcision also, spiritual, yes, which is the circumcision of our heart which is separation, sanctification. This is the circumcision that matters. So the sal salvation that God promised to us and you and I was not by work or by deed, but it was by grace. 
So Titus was supposed to preach also those things. Let us move on. For commitment, the divine kindness, mercy, and grace are God's motives for the salvation of men. What motive, what is the motivation? What motives God to save you and I? Is it because you, you are perfect, we already say no? Is it because we deserve, it, it, we already say no? So the reason why God decided to provide salvation to men is not human merit, but the divine kindness, mercy, and grace, Titus chapter 3. Grace, from the Greek word, charis, means goodwill, loving kindness, favor, benefit, bounty, justify by grace. Thank you very much. So it is because of the goodwill of God, the bounty of God, the loving kindness of God, so the mercy of God, mercy as we, grace as we, we, we said, come from the Greek word charis, which means goodwill, loving kindness, benefit, bounty. God decided to save you, not of your merit, as we said, but uh, because of his good will, his good pleasure. As other version, we say that we have been made for the good pleasure of God. God made you and I for his good pleasure. Right? So we have to understand it because many people actually will, uh, we will struggle about that. They will listen a voice saying that, oh, you are not perfect. Oh, you have this, this, and this, that. You are not going to be perfect. So just try to continue living and that's way. No, that's why you have to remain and remain, remember this word and say that, oh, I'm not saving by merit. It's not because I do a good work or a bad work or a bad deed that I will be saved or not. We already say that people, many people that go to hell, it's not because they have been committing a lot of things, horrible things. Of course, many do uh, does go there because they did er uh, horrible things, of course. But that is not the main, re the main reason. The main reason is because they reject the favor of God. They reject the grace of God. They reject the hand of God. That is the main reason. I mean, the reason that matter. Because we will have people in heaven that did horrible things. That's why we already, many people say the, 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 the heaven will be surprising for many people because they will say, but this guy also, he has been saved. Yes. You know, and also it will be a surprise for others maybe to be in, in hell. Also, many people will be surprising. That's why Jesus already prophesied about it in Matthew chapter 7. Many people will come that day and say, but Lord, Lord, what are, we cannot go to hell. Why? Because look, we do this. We preach your gospel. We make many miracles. We heal the, 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 the blinds, the dumbs, and so on. But God, we said, depart from me. I have never known you. Those of you who practice lawlessness, you despise my grace. You throw away my, my grace. You throw away my hand. You use my grace to continue living uh, on the in ungodly uh, way, ungodly manner, depart from me. And this will be very dangerous. It is very dangerous. Let us move on. Uh, number five. So the divine grace proves, number five, uh, Christians, the divine uh, grace proves to be saving to all men. Yes. So divine grace proves to be saving for all men. Titus chapter 2, verse uh, uh, 11, and not only for a select group of uh, predestinate, uh, as the Gnostic uh, preach, attributing the possibility of salvation only to a group of uh, people that call spiritual or pneumatic. Thank you very much. So the Bible is clear in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, we have read salvation is by grace and salvation was or have been manifest to all men. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God appeared to all men. There is no discrimination. 
you are white, you are black, you are this, you are that, you are from this country or another country, it does not matter. The Bible says all men. If you are a human being, you have to know that the grace of God was manifested for you also. This is very important. It's not for a selected group as Gnosticism preach. Gnosticism classifies human beings in three categories. They, they call them materialists, the materialistics. They, they call also the psychic peoples. And lastly, the mnematics or the spiritual. It is only those who are spiritual that will be saved or that have access to salvation, materialistics and psychic, they cannot be saved. The Bible says that that is absolutely wrong. Salvation have been manifested or uh, salvation, God show his salvation to all men. This is very important for us to understand that there is no discrimination about salvation. Now, let us move number six. The Trinity works together in salvation. Apostle Paul also uh, recommend Titus to preach about that, that uh, having a clear exposition that salvation is the work of the, 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 the Trinity, Father, Son, Spirit. Now, peace between man and God came, right, came uh, through Father and Jesus Christ, Titus chapter 1, verse 4, through the justification that reconciles us with God or to, to God. However, the work of salvation takes place through the new birth or regeneration, which allow us to see and enter the kingdom of God, John chapter 3, verse 3 and, seven, uh, 3 and 5, which happens through the action of the Holy Spirit, who in turn uh, was poured out upon us. You will find also in uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Thank you very much. So we have the, divi we have the Trinity working for salvation. We have been reconciled, reconciled, I mean, reconciled with God. Father reconciles him with him through the sacrifice of Christ. Now we come to salvation by the regeneration, new birth. And this is not coming from us. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. You will find the work of the Holy Spirit in the book of John, chapter 14. Jesus talked about it, chapter 16, also verse 8 when he will come, what will be the missions of the Holy Spirit to convince us, conviction of sins. No one can be convinced uh, about, uh, about his, his, his sins if the Holy Spirit does not uh, bring that uh, convic conviction uh, uh, in, in his heart and that the person turn away from his sins. No one will be saved. No one will be convinced. And also, of course, will not be saved. That's why Jesus says something very important. In Matthew chapter 12, when uh, the Pharisees, you know, tried to, was uh, reproaching him that he was casting out demons uh, by the power of Beelzebub. And uh, Jesus said that, you know, I'm telling you that all kinds of sins will be forgiven. But uh, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of God, will not be forgiven. Why? And we study in the previous uh, magazines also the divine project for all human beings or for each human being that the divine, the, the Holy Spirit is the one who convinces us for sins and judgment and justice or righteousness. Now, if someone blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, now, who will work for his salvation? Who will work? Not the, because he has blasphemes, he blasphemes against the Holy Spirit. So he will not be convinced from his sins, and no one who is not convinced from him, his sins will be saved. The grace is manifested when also the conviction of sins coming. The Holy Spirit walking in the heart. No one will say that I have come to Christ by myself. If you have come to Christ by yourself, you have to be sure that you have not yet come to Christ. You are still walking in your way. You will remain on your way. It is only the Holy Spirit that works in your life and in my life convincing us from our sins day after day that we might walk in the holiness. Seven, let us move on. With, uh, now, uh, divine grace, the divine grace through the new birth more than justifies, make us children of God and generates uh, salvation. Uh, therefore, 
if divine grace uh, through Jesus' death reconciles us with God or to God, allowing us uh, to draw near to him and uh, a faith in a sacrifice of Calvary justifies us uh, from uh, past sins, allowing the legal issue between us uh, and God uh, to be resolved, the same grace through the new birth more than justifies make us children of God and uh, generates a salvation. So it is working about our passing sins, I mean, and it's working also to continuing working now in the holiness. So salvation, the grace of God, the saving grace that people actually does not understand very well. Uh, uh, I mean, it is, it is something continually. Salvation is the first step. I mean, uh, I, I mean, removing us from the darkness and bringing us to light is the first step. It's not, the, it's not all the work of the divine grace. No, the divine grace will remove you from the darkness and now and we continue cleaning you because you are not living in the perfect environment. That's why the Bible will talk about sanctification as a process, not as a, a final step. No. If someone say, I am already holy, that means that he has ne not yet started to be holy. I mean, he is has, he has still in the darkness, not yet even in the light. Because imagine someone who is dirty, I mean, and he's living in darkness. When you bring him, bring him into, the, into light, right? Now, what will happen? He will start looking to himself and say, oh, look, this one is I'm dirty. Let me just start cleaning. And day after day, because we are not living in the perfect environment, we have to be always coming before the presence of God and say, Heavenly Father, forgive me. Heavenly Father, help me. Uh, to overcome this, to overcome that in my life, and so on. This is the work of sanctification. And this work does not come from you, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And it is the continuation of the divine saving grace working project, right? Lastly, uh, let us move on. The divine grace enables us to be freed from the bondage of a sin to the future through sanctification, as, as was said. If through justification, divine grace set us free in relation to past sins, the same grace of God after the new birth enables us to be released from the slavery of a sin in relation of the future through sanctification, providing that the condition of a safe uh, don't get lost with uh, the return to sin. To sin. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. For the grace of God, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So watch this. The, the grace of God, look how it works. Teaching us, the way the, the grace of God will teach us, the divine grace will teach us to do what? Deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Thank you very much, brother Christians. So as, as we said that the grace of God is not going only to, I mean, to deliver you from the darkness, bring you to light, and just let you live in continual living. You will return in the past sins. The grace of God, the Bible, that's why Apostle Paul said, the one who begins the good work will continue it. Now, how I really know that I have received that divine grace is because I am still walking in the holiness. I am still walking because God will not uh, make a half work in my life. The work of God in the life of Christians is complete. God will make a complete work in your life and in my life. So the grace of God that saves you, it is the same grace that will strain you and sanctify you. That is very important. The same grace now will teach you to deny 
to live on the ungodly manner or ungodly way, to reject the lust, the worldly lust, to abandon the practices which are contrary to the sound doctrine or to the word of God. That is very important. The word of God is full. The work of God in your life, in the life of a believer, is a complete work. It's not uh, an abstract work, a short off, or a partial work, but it is a complete. The work of God is complete in the life of a believer. Now, let us drop to the conclusions. The Apostle Paul uh, elect the correct definition of uh, God's saving grace as uh, the core of sound doctrine. Salvation is not the result of any human merit, and that is why it is, a sh it is the fruit of the divine grace. On the other hand, once God God a saving grace is manifest upon a human life, it will lead the saved to live a, sensi a sensible, just, and a holy way of life. Already in this world, it's not in the future only, no. In this world, denying ungodliness and a worldly lust. These lifestyles will produce meritorious works that will attest the presence of God's saving grace in the believer's life, impact society or impacting society, and glorifying God's name. Thank you very much, brother Christians. So these brothers and sisters, as we said, of course, during this uh, uh, Bible school that we will have in the following lessons, or the next lesson, let me say like this, we will see more about, uh, we will study more about uh, the working of the saving grace, the divine saving grace. This is very important. Because a lot of people make a lot of confusions. We have listened or heard about a lot of confusions about that grace. People just read uh, the first part of uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 saying that, okay, the God, we have been saved by the grace of God. Okay, what is grace? Grace is for favor. Grace is a, a goodwill of God. Grace is a loving kindness of God, uh, and so on. It's benefit, bounty of God. Yes, that is true. Now, how I will know that I have received that grace what will be the fruit? What will be the consequence in your life? If someone said to me that I am a believer, I'm not in his heart. If someone say I am an apple tree, I, mean, I have to see the fruit of that one. And then I will, of course, recognize the tree. So when people will see the fruits in your life, they will probably know that you have yet, you have already received that grace. The grace of God will always teach you. And if that grace is not teaching you, you should be sure that it's not the divine saving grace that you have received. And you have to pray God that he might help you. So God bless you this morning. And, and hoping that you enjoy this lesson. Uh, hopefully that we will see next Sunday. And uh, we will continue with uh, another topic. Trying to bring a little bit a clear understanding about the divine saving grace, the divine saving grace, which is not like many people actually believe that it works like or it looks like. So it's not what you believe that something is, that really the things mean that it is. And you can read those passages that we gave you, those references that we are given to you, those texts. Try to read by yourself. Try to ask that God help you. And if you are not yet saved, let me just tell you uh, that you are not guilty. God is not condemning you. You are listening this message because, of course, uh, God wants to work in your life because he wants really to change your life. He wants to save you. It does not matter your past. It does not matter what you have done in the past. God does not care about he is giving you the opportunity to change. He is giving you the opportunity to be saved. 
Let us pray. Lord, I give you thanks for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you very much for this lesson. I pray that you bless all our listeners, those who are on the broadcast, those maybe that will watch this program after uh, we finish here. Let the Holy Spirit walk in your life. For all our listeners, God, I pray. I do not know the conception that they have about the divine saving grace, your grace that you have manifested to all human beings, to all men. Lord, the Bible says that that grace will teach us to deny, to deny the worldly lust, to reject and abandon the practice of sins, and to try to live in a sensible manner, live in the holiness in this world, in this present or current world that we are living. Help us to understand it and give us strength to continue looking at you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, brother and sister. Now, please, uh, we are going to have an English service in a few minutes. So if you want to join us also in the broadcast, we'll be very uh, also happy. Uh, but uh, before that, let's meet on, uh, on next Sunday. God bless you. And uh, let us see in a few minutes for those who will be uh, in the English service with us. God bless you.